السلام علیکم اینڈ ویلکم ٹو پی جے میز افیشیل یوٹیوب چینل میں کچھ آپ کو چند ایسے کلاسک انٹرویوز دکھاؤں گا اور اس کے اندر ایک ایسا انٹرویو ہے جو کہ میں نے ڈاکٹر نسیم حسن شاہ سے کیا تھا جو کہ چیف جسٹس تھے سپریم کورٹ آف پاکستان اور آف کورس یہ پریزیڈنٹ تھے پاکستان کرکٹ بورڈ کے بی سی سی پی اس وقت ہوتا تھا اور یہ وہی جج ہیں جن کے اوپر بڑے الزامات آئے اور ان کے بڑے تنقید کا نشانہ بنے لیکن ایک چیز ہے انہوں نے ایڈمٹ کیا کہ جو پھانسی دی تھی ذوالفقار علی بھٹو کو وہ غلط تھی یہ پریشر میں تھے غلط انہوں نے کیا چلیں ہو گیا ہو گیا لیکن ہسٹری کے اندر تو ایک داغ آ گیا ان سے میں نے شارجہ کرکٹ ٹورنامنٹ میں کے دوران ایک انٹرویو میں نے کیا کہ یہ کیا چاہتے تھے کیا کرنا چاہتے تھے کرکٹ کے لیے تو یہ انگریزی میں انٹرویو ہے یہ ذرا سنیا سو آئی ایم گو ٹو بی آسکنگ ڈاکٹر شاہ لاٹ آف کوشچنس آن کنٹمپری کرکٹ اینڈ اے فیو تھنگس اباؤٹ دی بی سی سی پی سو ویلکم ٹو ٹی وی ایشیا ڈاکٹر Now, after the ICC meeting, um, what actually happened? Well, uh, nothing uh, actually happened uh, in a very dramatic manner. As you know, we had taken some decisions whereby ICC became an independent organization and David Richards has taken over as the chief executive and is, I hope, in the process of setting up uh, his independent organization, which of course continues to be linked to the MCC in many ways, but now it's a totally autonomous organization. And as for the other matters that were decided upon, those are being implemented in due course according to the usual uh, procedures. And uh, uh, I don't think anything uh, dramatic has happened except that we have in some series the third empire functioning and some of the other uh, important aspects that were talked about are being slowly given effect to by the uh, various initiative uh, cricketing nations in their respective constitutions. Now here in Sharjah right now we are missing one team India and sadly India has declined to come here and of course the tour of Pakistan is in jeopardy as well. Um, in the next couple of months. What do you think ought to be done or can be done to improvise the re relations between the two countries? Well, this is a very important question, but it's uh, not within the field of the cricket administrators. Unfortunately, the political situation at the moment is uh, not propitious for uh, cricket to be played in Pakistan or India in which the two countries can participate. The Hazrat Bal seed is a matter which is exciting a lot of uh, attention in Pakistan and a lot of anguish in Pakistan. And for that reason, I think despite uh, our great desire to continue with cricketing relations and have normal cricketing series, It has become a bit difficult and the situation is not uh, helped by the statements of the extremist Hindu organizations which come out with statements that they will uh, unearth the pitches and will not allow matches to be played there and that uh, such uh, uh, sentiments floating all around, it does become difficult. But I am still very hopeful that uh, normal picketing relations will continue because the boards are in constant touch and they are on the friendliest terms and both of them are desirous of continuing these relations and uh, I am very confident that as soon as this very acute political crisis which is uh, pleasant sort of uh, gets ameliorated, there is absolutely no reason why the normal cricket relations should not resume. Yes, indeed, uh, you're quite right in saying so because at the end of the day, um, we should not really have politics in, uh, in any kind of sports. There is no politics in sports, but as uh, the matches are to be played in the respective countries, where the 
God is witnessed by hundreds and thousands of people, we cannot totally ignore their sentiments and how they will react. So it is here where the difficulty arises. Otherwise, if it was left to the sporting boards alone, I think there would be no problem at all. Now, talking of uh, sporting boards, uh, you are the president of the BCCP in Pakistan. How can you actually suggest or give me some uh, news or some kind of an idea? How can we actually improvise the domestic cricket in the country? Well, you see, this is a problem which has been agitating us for a long time. One of our very notable cricketers, Mr. Imran Khan, has been very severely criticizing the domestic structure of cricket in Pakistan. But unfortunately, whenever we asked him to make some concrete suggestions and sit in the committees where the domestic structure can be revised, he has always refrained from doing so. And that, uh, as a judge, makes me think that most of his criticism is uh, not really so well founded as some people think, because otherwise, when it comes to concrete measures, how to improve the cricketing structure, to take care of the uh, cricketing future of the uh, budding cricketers, their financial uh, emoluments and their financial uh, problems, how they'll be taken over and how uh, merely by organizing uh, cricket on sort of provincial basis and having some tournaments between the provinces and not uh, and eliminating the banks and other organizations from the cricketing uh, sort of sphere, how that will help is something which has never been worked out in any great detail. And so therefore my own view is that there is nothing radically uh, wrong with the cricketing structure as it exists in Pakistan. There is always room for improvement in any sphere and that is the situation in Pakistan too. But any oh, revolutionary changes do not appear to be called for. But there are revolutionary changes. Uh, we've had uh, people like Wasim Akram and Wakar Yunus and lately Amin Azir, who really do not uh, have played as much first-class cricket, have come out on the international scene. And only because they were picked up at the right time, at the right place, by the right person. So if they had gone through the run of the mill, I think we could have produced maybe five Wasim Akrams, five Wakars and maybe five Amin Azirs. I think as we say in uh, our legal terminology, all oh, this is very conjectural and very academic. With this structure, we have won the World Cup. We are uh, hopefully on the way of winning this triangular series. And I think there's nothing very much wrong with it. We have been able to spot new players. And Amir Nazir, whom you're talking about, is uh, as, uh, as, uh, as you say, a product of this very, this very structure and the new structure that is talked about is never really spelt out in any great detail and nobody knows how five Ahmed Nazis and five Asim Akrams and five Akar Unices could be discovered by this utopian structure that is talked about. I really don't believe in this. Okay. Now, can Sharjah cricket be what the world is looking for? Because uh, if you look at uh, South Africa after 28 years in cricket exile and uh, looking at Sharjah, just 12 years and uh, with the help of people like Asif Iqbal, uh, this tournament has really taken an international structure. Yes, I think uh, the Sharjah uh, the cricket tournament has played a very significant and a very notable part in uh, developing cricket in uh, uh, sustaining and improving interest in cricket and here I am uh, sort of probably one of the busiest persons in my country but uh, coming and watching cricket for the last two or three days and therefore the amount of interest this has generated shows that uh, its importance and what it has done for cricket 
and we are have, having this it, this. it is this experience which players get to play at this level which brings out the best in them and produces world class cricketers. And if we had such tournaments as a Sharjah a cricket tournament, I think that would be very useful and very helpful for the development of the game of cricket. Excellent. Now, just uh, looking at one aspect of this tournament, the beneficiary system, where it benefits uh, players from all over the world. Do you think the Board of Control for Cricket in Pakistan can start a scheme where they ought to benefit some of the players um, who probably may never be nominated uh, perhaps uh, to the CBFS? Yes, I think that could be done. We haven't given this too much thought so far, but now that you have mentioned it, I think this is an aspect which we might consider. I see. Now, looking on to the playing side, uh, currently, for example, in this uh, current Charger series, we seem to be having a lot of uh, fitness problems with the team. Yes, this is a matter which is a matter of great concern to me, and I have been very unhappy with the situation, and I've talked to um, the captain and to our manager, and I'm sort of a bit uh, unhappy with our own selection team for picking up a squad in which about 25% of the players have become unfit so quickly. But uh, lots of reasons are given, the heat here and some lack of uh, uh, adjustment and acclimatization and things like that. But uh, this is a problem which does deserve consideration and I think I am going to take it up a little more seriously when I go back home. You're quite right because uh, earlier on in the West Indies tour, uh, five of our players, our major key players, uh, were unfit and because of that I think Pakistan uh, came, uh, let's say, on the um, receiving end. That's true, actually, because uh, this is a matter which is left uh, uh, very much to the selection selectors and uh, I come in only to so, so when it's a real sort of emergency or something uh, where there's some conflict or some uh, dispute to be settled and so we rely on the selectors and I do feel that the selectors might have that, uh, given little more consideration to the fitness aspect than they have done. Now that it has come out so pointedly in this tournament and now as you point out even in the West Indies tour this problem had occurred, I think I'll be doing this more thoroughly. Now one thing I'd really like to commend the board on is that uh, um, the, two of the selectors are here and watching uh, the Pakistan team perform. Do you think it would be well worth the board to send these selectors to watch the players in the domestic series? I think they should, uh, but I, uh, because the uh, no, domestic series, as you must realize, that matches are taking place all over the country practically at the same time. And I'm not sure whether how they can manage to see all the matches, but they should see the more important ones. I agree. And what about uh, a cricket manager, a permanent cricket manager for the team? Well, you see, that uh, is a matter which I think uh, we are still uh, grappling with that. We had a manager in the car bottom for a while and uh, I think we did quite well because we, we won the World Cup and after he retired, we have not really been able to uh, pick up uh, the right manager so far. We are still grappling with this problem and I am not sure whether we can have a permanent manager right now. We are still in the midst of uh, working things out on that front. Also, as um, I guess a former cricketer for Pakistan, what I have seen is that uh, the Pakistan team also lacks a professional physio because with the tours and different climates and fatigue and exhaustion, the players really need somebody to look after their physique. Yes, this is a very important point and I felt it myself. We were very uh, good uh, friend whom I think Mr. Bukhater has invited Dr. Harun from London and he has been sort of uh, 
looking after our boys here although he had come here only to watch the matches and he is a, a person who has uh, been asked to provide us with names of certain qualified physiotherapists because you are quite right we need a regular physiotherapist to accompany the boys on all the tours now it's very easy to criticize the bccp whether you know it's doing the right thing or it's doing the wrong thing but um, a person comes to my mind your secretary shahid rafi the selfless work is done for the board yes we are proud of him he is working very hard and he has got some very important executive duties to perform and uh, at the moment he could not come to witness the tournament because he is uh, participating in a course in which uh, it's very difficult to take time out but uh, we are all very happy with him and uh, hopefully he can continue his good work for quite some time to come now just recently uh, the board of control won a case against the sunday telegraph and um, i think it's a great uh, feather in the board's uh, cap that really allegations like that were dismissed yes, we are very happy with that and in this case i would like to publicly acknowledge the great services of our solicitors mr ash green and his uh, team in the way they selflessly conducted the case and took a tremendous interest in it because here was a case in which the most fantastic and most uh, uh, degrading allegations had been made against our cricketers and even against the Pakistani nation as a whole and they took up this case as a challenge and uh, uh, worked selflessly on it and in the end I'm very happy to note that the uh, newspaper had to apologize and the matter was settled quite satisfactorily. Dr. Shah, I hope uh, you continue the good work uh, you've been entrusted with and I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot of laurels at the end of the day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much Thank for your you time. Thank you very much. ये थे डॉक्टर नसीम हसन शाह आपने इनकी बातें सुनी बल्कि अगर आपको ये समझ आई होगी आई एम श्योर उसके अंदर आपको पता चल जाता है कि कौन किस शोबे से आता है और क्रिकेट को कैसे रन करने की कोशिश करता है कई जगह पर डॉक्टर साहब को पता भी नहीं था वो क्या करना है क्या करना नहीं है हालांकि ही वॉज अ वेरी बिजी मैन और इतनी बिजी पोस्ट के ऊपर एस चीफ जस्टिस सुप्रीम कोर्ट वो इधर आए और यू नो क्रिकेट भी देखी हर चीज़ तो मैं समझता हूँ कि ये एक आई ओपनर होता है कि गेट द पीपल द राइट पीपल फॉर द राइट जॉब लुक आफ्टर योर सेल्फ एंड प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू द चैनल ऑफ कॉस्ट आपके सामने और भी मैं क्लासिक इंटरव्यूज लेते आऊँगा खुदा